Hello. This next video is all about rouging. Hello. It's great to be back with you again. It's Tim Sandal. And uh, today's video is about rouging and this kind of relates to the equipment that's used in clean rooms, the quality and why looking out for rouging is something that's um, quite important. Okay, so let's get into the uh, presentation. So in the pharmaceutical industry, we want to make sure we're using good quality stainless steel. And there's different grades of stainless steel and there's different standards that are used. One of the most common is the US system. And within this, there's um, a grade called 304, which is that might be used when corrosion resistance isn't of great importance. So you might use that, for example, outside of an aseptic processing area where you're um, less concerned and you haven't got direct product um, contact. It's also with um, the grades of stainless steel, they also have letters after them as well. So you might see an H or an L, for example. And this indicates the uh, carbon level or the um, degree of corrosion resistance. For something like aseptic processing or for where product is um, formulated, then uh, the pharmaceutical sector tends to go for 316L grade which is very smooth, very polished, um, passivated in a way that the um, surface roughness is um, very low, so it's very smooth. So here's something called an RA value, which is less than 0.8. And with um, preventing stainless steel from um, corroding, um, it's the addition of chromium which um, helps give the material its resistance to um, corrosion. And also with molybdenum as well, which um, helps to prevent pitting. And you may be wondering about the little figure on the um, slide there. That's a reference to um, the amount of stainless steel that's produced around the world each year in terms of metric tons. So if you want to know something of interest, then there's something to and wow your friends with. Okay, so we've got something very nice and shiny and polished on the screen. I don't mean me, I mean the stainless steel. So stainless steel is rendered stainless because of a thin protective layer that goes across it and this is where the chromium I mentioned comes in because it gives it a oxide film and this prevents the um, stainless steel from uh, being subjected to chemicals that would then cause um, corrosion and the way this protective layer is made is a process called passivation so when stainless steel wears it gets scratched or where rouging appears then um, repassivation is required so what's this thing called rouging anyway and is it just a posh word for rusting well to a degree it is and rouging is the corrosion found in stainless steel. And it's the chemical development of um, ferric oxide. And that means it's the build up of red colored deposits, say within pipe work, around a filling machine, uh, within a vessel, for example. And although it's mostly um, iron oxide, there's also um, other parts of the um, elements that have gone in to make the stainless steel. Uh, stainless steel is an alloy, so it's composed of lots of different um, materials. And um, this can happen due to poor quality stainless steel, so there could be iron contamination from the welding process. But more than likely in pharmaceuticals, then it's due to um, a solvent or due to a chemical. And by solvent, this can include uh, water, particularly water for injection. So rouging can be a common problem with water systems, for example. That's why they need to be um, inspected every five years. But our focus here is within the clean room environment. So why might rouging be a concern? Well, rouging is a concern because um, one, it, gener it can generate particles. Yeah, so you get that kind of rusting effect and particles can come down. And also it provides an opportunity for um, microbial adhesion, which is something that we, we don't want because it makes it more difficult to clean. 
We can also have um, corrosion occurring uh, through um, chemicals. So um, the choice of disinfectant is really important. So if we were to use, say, chlorine dioxide, where there's an example like of a, a trade name of a material, the bispore, for example, um, this is a weak acid, so it will eventually start corroding um, stainless steel by eating away at the passivation layer. Which is why following the application of chlorine dioxide to anything that's made from stainless steel, we need to wipe with 70% IPA or with WFI, and that both of those need to be sterile if they're when they're used in aseptic areas. So not only is it important not to leave chlorine dioxide in contact with um, stainless steel because it get rigging, it's also incredibly important never to have any um, chlorine dioxide where hydrogen peroxide is used, particularly in the vapor form. So if you've got like a decontamination chamber or an isolator, that would be really bad because it would cause a reaction and the stainless steel passivation would just completely wear away. We'd end up with um, brown coloured stainless steel and completely unsuitable. So if you do get um, corrosion, if you see corrosion, well, first of all, it's important to inspect regularly, as you would say for a filling machine, um, probably once a week, you check it, make sure there's no signs of um, rouging. Um, in terms of how much is allowed, well, there's always going to be a tiny bit. So there'll be regular inspections for um, corrosion rates. And generally in pharma, it's provided that is not more than 0.1 uh, millimeter a year. Then that's generally kind of OK. When it starts to increase, that's a time to go and repassivate or replace the stainless steel. And also it's important to use um, low or no residue disinfectant. So hydrogen peroxide, for example, is far more suitable to use on stainless steel than the chlorine chemicals that I mentioned um, earlier. And another um, alternative to stainless steel is anodized aluminium. And this is where um, aluminium is taken and it's kind of dunked in this bath of uh, electrolytic solution like sulfuric acid. And this again gives it a, an appropriate coating um, that um, helps to protect it from um, corrosion. And it's called anodized due to electrolysis and it links to the anode and uh, gives it some protection there. And although um, both will rust, um, Generally, anodized aluminium is a little bit more resistant and also it tends to be quite preferred in pharma because it only weighs a third of what stainless steel weighs. So a lot of heavy pharma equipment tends to be made from anodized aluminium these days rather than stainless steel. So, um, for example, heavy carts and movable UDAFs and, and, and so on. OK, so thank you for watching. The object here was to get across why um, rouging can be a problem, particularly in clean rooms, particularly where um, we're trying to create grade A conditions or we might have um, a formulation of product and that kind of thing. So rouging, not good, but keep your eyes out for it. OK, so thank you for watching. I'm Tim Sandal. As usual, good luck with the rest of your day and good bye bye.